Welcome, Scrum Masters. Welcome to Agreements Facilitation. Where are we now? This is the second of two sections on facilitation. The first section covered facilitating the planning and retrospective meeting. The second section covers facilitating the review meeting and team agreements. And previously in section two, we worked on mindset and heart set. And in section three, we worked on daily, weekly, and monthly rhythms. So where are we in this particular section? So this is the second of two major videos in this section. And after this, you'll be focusing on homework. So here's the nitty gritty of what we're going to cover today. We're going to cover five different agreements, the planning agreement, the review agreement, the retrospective agreement, the definition of done, and the definition of ready. The outcome of this video is that you'll have a clear understanding of what you need to do to facilitate conversations about agreements. So let's just look at an example stand-up agreement so you have a sense of what I'm talking about when I say the word team agreements. So the daily stand-up starts at 9 a.m. It ends at 9.15 a.m. No exceptions. It takes place in the Pluto room. Everyone stands around the task board. Only the scrum team attends and so on and so forth. So this is what will be the outcome of your agreement meetings that you have with your team. And you'll be facilitating these agreement meetings as the facilitator and as the scrum master of the team. Let's talk about the big picture of being a facilitator and of facilitating these meetings. So first, agreements define how the team will work together. I recommend that you define agreements for everything the team repeatedly does. I urge you to turn expectations into agreements because alignment is very difficult to achieve, so making things explicit is very helpful. Don't make assumptions. Understand that when the team moves to Scrum, it's creating a new way of working. And the question is, what is that new way? Capture that new way of working in agreements. When something can be improved, go ahead and change the agreement. Agreements are not process. They are not handed down by someone else. They're created by the team and they're for the team. So change them when it makes sense to do so. And finally, you are responsible for the structure of these meetings, but you are not responsible for the content. So you are responsible for creating the meetings and facilitating the meetings, but the agreement itself is not your responsibility. Make sure that these meetings are an open dialogue amongst all team members, not just a representative few. Stakeholders may of course offer thoughts, and you can use the fist of five technique and dot voting to get consensus and to move through disagreements. Always make sure to use PTAS. That's the facilitation technique that we've discussed before. And it stands for purpose, time, agenda, and summary. Be extremely clear about the purpose of the meeting since these meetings are somewhat unusual. And so people will not be accustomed to them and they won't know what they're about. Write down the purpose and the agenda and adhere to the time. Understand that multiple conversations about this might be needed. You may not get everything done in one meeting. Actively summarize during the meeting, and then these meetings typically last between one and two hours. So here are some elements to consider when you're putting together the planning agreement. Who will attend the planning meeting? Certainly the team, that's the product owner, scrum master, and the developers. Will any stakeholder, subject matter experts, people from the business attend? What are the meeting segments? Remember that the two key segments are the planning what and the planning how. Make sure to write down that the team will adopt PTAS. Figure out how stories which are not ready will be treated. And how long will planning how take? Will it be time boxed on a PBI basis? So here's a partial example of what a planning agreement will look like. These are just some elements of a planning agreement. Your agreement will be bigger. So here are the participants. When and where will the meeting take place? It starts at 10 a.m. and ends at 12 p.m. The meetings will be divided into two phases, the planning what and the planning how. 
Stories which are not ready will not be considered under any circumstances. So this team is taking a hard line on that. Here's what the planning what looks like. It's time box to 30 minutes. The PO and development team will agree on a sprint goal. And you see the rest of it there. Then the planning how, it's time box to 70 minutes. The scrum master will indicate how much time is available for story and so on and so forth. Now let's turn to the review agreement. Here's some elements to consider. How will disagreements about what done means be resolved? Will the development team show working software in all cases? If not, what will it show instead? How will the PO provide information about completion dates? Again, here's a partial example of what a review agreement looks like. Your agreement will be bigger. Who the participants are, when and where it takes place, all members of the development team will participate in giving the demo. The development team will provide a link to the latest build, and this link will be published so that any employee can examine the latest build. The product owner will show the expected completion date for the next two releases. The development team will receive feedback from the PO and stakeholders on the product increment. Let's talk now about the retrospective agreement. Here are some elements to consider. Will meeting notes be published? What retrospective technique will be used? What are the rules regarding over-talking, multiple conversations, and so forth? What data will be brought to the meeting? Here's a partial example of a retrospective agreement. The participants, and when and where the meeting takes place, are listed. The burndown chart and spring backlog will be brought into the meeting. The team will use five whys on the biggest issue encountered during the sprint. The team will brainstorm and then use dot voting to determine the biggest issue. The team will collaborate on producing an action plan. The action plan will be published. No other information will be published. All conversations are confidential. Now the definition of done. Here are some elements to consider. Will there be different definitions of done for a PBI, sprint, and release? Will the definition of done be revised? And how will it be revised? Is it sufficient to sustain technical excellence? So it's important that everything that's required to maintain technical excellence be in the definition of done. Will every part of the DOD be applied to every PBI? Or is it the case that the DOD is a Chinese menu and the team picks for every PBI from the DOD? And how will the DOD be represented in the task board? Will they be particular tasks for every element of the DOD? Or will the team simply assume that all of the DOD elements are being considered? So here's a partial example of a definition of done. At the PBI level, unit test coverage will be at least 90%. There will be no defects. The sprint definition of done, the product increment will be in integration tested, and it will be available on an internal server. The release definition of done, the security is validated by the ops team, and a rollback plan is in place. Finally, for the definition of ready, here are some elements to consider. What form will the PBIs take? Will there be user stories or requirements? Do dependencies need to be identified? What additional information does each PBI need? Workflow, business logic, security, internationalization. Does the team need to know how to test the story? Does each PBI need to have business value? Does each PBI need to be validated? Do performance criteria need to be identified? And here's a partial example. All PBIs, including defects, will be user stories. All stories must have acceptance criteria, and the acceptance criteria will be defined using given, when, then. Each user story will have been sized and story points using poker planning by the development team. And the development team knows how to demo the user story. So these are five agreements that we've talked about today. There are many other agreements. As I mentioned before, I recommend that you create agreements for everything that you repeatedly do. So here are some examples of other agreements that you may want to create. The daily stand-up agreement, a sprint agreement, for example, all development team members must be in the team room between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. The product owner is available every day between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. Those are two items that might be part of your sprint agreement. Pre-planning, backlog grooming agreement, and release planning agreement. So here's where we are now. We're finished with the videos for this section. So your next task is to complete the five homework assignments. Here's a summary of what we've done today. You have learned how to facilitate team agreements 
and you have learned why team agreements are important.